So first thing I did was do a little sketch of my dragon to kind of get my pose. I just retried legs over and over until I was happy with it. And then I cut out some of these vines from a picture I'd taken down in Key West. And I'm just using the warp tool to kind of push and pull them into the shape I want using that sketch I made kind of as just a rough guideline. And just switching between the warp tool and free transform and I'll also start doing some liquefying. And then not being too careful about blending just yet because I know I'm going to be layering things up and no need to blend an area that I'm going to cover up with a leg or something later. So just cutting out another piece. I like the way the roots went into the ground there, so I used all the detail of that edge. And then here I start doing a little bit of puppet warping, bending things around to match the legs. And more legs. So yeah, I'm just sort of switching between doing some liquefying, doing some uh, warp transform, and doing some puppet warping. And just layering things up, adding more detail to different areas. I thought that area of the tail could use some tinier vines. And I found a spot on one of these vines that already kind of had a hole in it that looked a bit like an eye. So I used that to base around my head and then warped it a bit more to make it a little bigger and more obviously an eye shape. I ended up scrapping these feet a little later. They looked a little bit too much like flippers. Or something kind of looking a bit like a salamander at this point but <laughs> we'll fix that with some some extra vines and spikes and things to make them look a bit more like a dragon and then here I'm just masking away some areas blending a bit more building up the legs adding more and more layers of, of these sticks I only actually used two images of the vines and just kept reusing and because it was all warped and transformed so many times in different ways it it didn't look too copied over and over. You didn't see like the same configuration of vines a bunch of times, which worked in my favor. And taking some extra time to start blending together some of the pieces I plopped in there earlier, using layer masks so I can bring it back and take it away over and over until it looks good. And starting in a little bit of shading on the base there, playing up that the light was coming from above. And I'm using clipping masks to make sure my paint stays down on top of just the dragon. And here's where I redo the feet. Again, more warp tool. Blending it a bit. So that piece is actually the same from the top part of that same leg I'm putting it on. So those roots are sort of at either end of that leg. But again, they're so warped and bent around, you can't tell it's the same piece. And more liquefying. So yeah, it's, it's a lot of the same over and over. It looks complicated, but really, I'm you know, once you master the warp and the transform and the liquefy, you just kind of combine those over and over to, to get the desired effect. And there, I used the same foot twice, so I kind of patch tooled in some areas so it didn't look exactly the same. But I also knew it was going to be kind of blurry later, so I didn't spend too much time. Then I realized that my sketch had uh, the head up a little bit more, and I liked the way that angle looked, so I did a quick liquefy of that. And decided to open his mouth, which I feel helped a lot. Uh, being able to see his teeth made him look a bit more dragon-like, which I'll add in a minute. And masking away some of the edges so it didn't look as, you know, pen tooled off around the edges too smooth. So I went in between some of the branches and things to give it some variation. And then started adding in the teeth. I was just using the lasso tool to kind of make points from that same stick and moving, moving each piece around until I liked it. I didn't want them to be too uniform and perfectly placed, so I just sort of slapped them in there and... Tweaked them around a bit, made some a little darker. I ended up later deciding that I wanted to show the sort of the roof of his mouth to give it some more dimension. So I'll do that a bit later on in the edit. Doing a bit more liquefying and reshaping of the face a little bit. And some more tweaking and shading. And then on to Nile. So I always pen tool my subjects for the most part. I just 
you get such a cleaner selection and you can really get detailed. So I, I take a good amount of time to, to pen tool it. Obviously, I've sped this up considerably. I'm not, I'm not that fast at pen tooling. And getting all the little areas. And then once I had him all cut out, I threw him on top of the monster. And obviously he looked pretty fake right off the bat. So I first thing decided to do a shadow and that's just black paint on a layer. Nothing too fancy there. I realized his arm was at kind of a weird angle. So I moved that down a bit to make more sense. And that shirt was also kind of baggy. So I, I liquefied that in a bit and then decided to start adding in some of these spikes on the back, give the dragon a bit more interest in detail. And I was just opening back up my vine thing, finding a vine that was long and interesting and cutting it out, throwing it on, on his back. And then I realized that Niall needed some reins to be holding. Otherwise, what the heck is that hand doing out there? So I used one of those pieces and added a vine for him to be holding on to. And then this will be a lot of the same over and over for a bit here, just using the pen tool to cut out a piece and warping and transforming it into place. And a lot of times I would use the same piece and duplicate it and warp it another way so I didn't have to cut out as many little vines. And I decided to shrink down his neck a little bit using the liquify tool where you can kind of pinch in parts of it. And adding the horns to the back of his head. You'll notice here I even took time to go in and make that vine go under the vine going over his eye just to make it look more like part of him, if that made any sense. <laughs> and then more vines. A lot of vines going on. Decided to add some more chin dangly beard bits, if you will. And then all of these ones below, I've been doing a, a brightness contrast to to darken down so they blended in more with the bottom of them. If I left them as bright as they were, they stood out weirdly and I wanted them to look like they had the same amount of shadow and stuff on them as, as the dragon did. And reusing more of the same pieces, adding spikes here and there, just building it up where I thought it could use a little more, a little more interest. I knew I'd be doing this earlier on, so when I cut out my original pieces, I didn't take too much time with the edges, knowing that my edges would have all these little spikes coming off of them later on. And thought it would be cool if he had little elbow spikes for no apparent reason other than it would look cool. And so I'm adding those on. Again, just reusing the same pieces over and over and warping them different ways. Masking away areas so they kind of blend in and go in and under different vines on the legs. Decided to add a few more of these long pieces I already had cut out on top of on top of the bulk of the dragon as opposed to poking off just to give it some more variation and you know, normally when you're when you're warping things over and over, it it starts to lose its its detail. You're you're moving the pixels around, and so they will blur some, but not a terrible amount. And you can do some sharpening. Plus, I knew I was going to be doing a motion blur anyway, so it didn't have to be perfect. And then I thought it was about time to see what the dragon would look like on the background. Uh, thanks again to Sarah Ann Lareth for letting me use this image she took up in Canada. I actually had to. Photoshop out Lizzie Gad and her dog from the photo because I didn't think there should be people wandering around in the background. And then just blending, it was two images I used and kind of blend those together using layer masks and then started darkening down the foreground a bit, just playing around with, with placement of, you know, where the dragon should be in the image and how far up the horizon line should be. I ended up deciding to make it ever so slightly slanted towards the left side of the frame just to subtly create even a bit more movement. Started working on a shadow. I just did a elliptical tool, filled it in with black and blurred it a bunch. And then I keep duplicating that blurred elliptical piece and stretching it and layering it up in different areas. So his shadow is darkest where he's closest to the ground and, and so on. 
and started getting into the motion blur. So I did a, a more drastic motion blur and then masked it away from the background. So it was really blurry right in the foreground and then did another blur to the whole image and masked that away, not the whole image, the whole background, masked that away from the trees a bit. So it's motion blurriest in the foreground and then getting less motion blurry as it goes back. Added some smoke on top to kind of blend him a bit in with the background, play up this foggy, smoky, eerie atmosphere a bit more. And did some motion blur to the back legs. Again, all these are at various different different amounts of motion blur for different parts. And only blurring the edges of, of some of the feet in different areas. And selecting with the lasso tool, feathering by a lot, and then applying the motion blur to different areas. I figured, you know, these feet are kind of swinging to take the next step, so they're going to be a bit blurrier than the rest. And then threw on some particles because I am obsessed with throwing on some particles. <laughs> I don't care who knows it and I'm going to keep doing it. And then actually did a bit of a motion blur to the particles as well. Here I'm blurring the tail a little bit. Realized there were a few areas that could be cut out of the bulk of the dragon. Cleaning up little bits here and there. And... Doing a little bit more liquefying, which after a period of time, I've duplicated and merged all my dragon layers. So I still have them somewhere, but now he's one big piece, so I can liquefy pieces together as one thing. Used a layer style to do an inner glow on Nile to have that light look like it's wrapping around him a bit more. Now I'm using the, actually just the warp, I'm sorry, the smudge tool to blend his hair a bit. And there's that edge glow I was talking about. I'm just masking it away from the parts where it doesn't make sense. Because I obviously wanted it up, up on his head and his arms and stuff, but it doesn't make sense where he's contacting uh, with the dragon. And then I thought it'd be cool for the dragon to be kicking up some grit. So I used a picture of these flying rocks and, you know, roughly placed them in there, masked away some because there was a bit too many. And then did a motion blur to that. And some for the front foot. I figured if he's crashing through here, he's going to be kicking up some stuff. And just using the lasso tool to grab bits and move them around and duplicate some. And and I also wanted to add in some, some smoke or like a poof of dust. I ended up moving it up to his front foot. Did some behind, some in front. This also kind of helped blend him in a bit more with the ground. When compositing things, always where, where foot's making contact is always the hardest part to composite. And then I decided it would be cool if some of these little sticks were flying off just because why not? And so I'm grabbing different parts of those and adding them on. Ended up doing a, a radial blur to those because they're kind of going out at all angles. So once I had them all placed, I merged them together and, and did a blur. And then I got into my favorite part where I get to do all the digital painting on top. It's basically dodge and burn. So I have uh, one layer set to overlay and I do some smaller detail with that. A layer set to soft light that I do broader areas. And usually I'd just a normal layer that I add shadows on. So at this point I'm just bopping around Nile and adding some highlights here and there. Giving him some more shape and detail in the eyes and just playing up whatever details I want to pop a bit or alter the lighting some to make it blend more with the image. And lightening his legs a little bit. Decided to make the sword a bit brighter. So I selected that. And some details on the sword. I believe that is Aaliyah Michelle's uh, sword. Thanks for letting me borrow that. And a little bit of shading on the dragon, adding some just shadows to the, the bottom side of some of the vines. It's a little hard to tell in this sped up motion, but it's happening. And some more slight overall shading. 
So at this point, my computer started to get a bit bogged down because this file had 82 bajillion layers because I have a photoshopping problem. <laughs> and uh, so my computer had trouble keeping up with the screen record and the editing. So I ended up stopping the recording and just finishing up the edit without recording it. And here is the finished image. So I just did a bit more color editing. I warmed up the highlights a bit and actually made it a little bit cool behind him in the background so he popped off a little bit and you know just did all my final little tweaks and that's how this image came together.